welcome to Nuclear Medicine, and this is our Nuclear Medicine Department. In our department we have such things as a gamma camera, we have the collimators, or actually that's a collimator, the other two are on the camera. We have the uptake probe, and we have uh, the well counter, and we have a couple more uptake probe, I should say well counters over here. Uh, then this little guy behind us, if you spin around slowly, is our processing station for our gamma camera. So we can process things such as nuclear cardiology procedures or we can adjust images to improve the intensity or really not necessarily the intensity but the uh, contrast and the, and the brightness of our images that we actually acquire. So let us go through the beginning day of a nuclear medicine technology. We walk into our radioactive hot lab. Uh, and in our hot lab we have a fume hood. Inside the fume hood, we actually prepare our radiopharmaceuticals. If you listen closely, the alarm will go off. And that's because there is uh, too much air getting in there. And it wants to keep a clean environment. And we'll discuss this a little bit more in a little bit. But here's our dose calibrator reading. It tells us as we measure our radioactive compounds. And we actually measure them in that little hole down here that the light will come on. Will the light come on? There we go. There's the light. Very good. And let's close that back down so it'll be quiet. The rest of the hot lab, we have a storage area for our, our radioactive sources that actually go on the gamma camera. Uh, we have a dose here that's arrived from the radio pharmacy. We have a little mini L block uh, with, a, with a small clean air environment. And then we have a large L block that's actually not inside the clean air environment. In these two L blocks, we have lead, glass, and we have solid lead down here and where we can actually work with our radio pharmaceuticals. There's some material in here right now. Uh, we can either compound uh, or we can prepare patient doses and things of that nature. Now this little guy over here again is another L block, uh, which when you're working with radioactive material, you want to make sure that you are behind this so you uh, don't radiate the central portions of your body. It's just your hands. All right. So. We have arrived with it in the nuclear medicine department. I just realized my ring is inside out. So there's my ring. Um, I'll be right back. Yeah. Sure. So here's my ring badge. Nuclear medicine technology is where a ring badge. If you take the concept of the in inverse square law, the closer you are to a radioactive source, the more radiation you're going to get. And since we deal with syringes that might have radioactivity in it, this one does not, but hypothetically, let's say that it did, then we would, uh, you know, definitely for sure want to, I mean, it's really stuck in there, isn't it? We want to make sure that uh, we don't get exposed. So we also use the lead shield here, this device, in order to, whoops, be able to, that was water, uh, in order to be able to further protect ourselves from radioactive materials, or I should say radiation, that would be emitted from the source. So our... Radioactive material has arrived. When it arrives, we have to actually check it to make sure that it is appropriately sealed and protected, therefore not giving on any excess amount of radiation. If we come over here, this is called a, uh, a white label one, which means that there should be very little amount of activity coming off of it, and I believe it's no more than one milliard per hour at surface, and then uh, at three feet, it should be background. I'm going to have to check up on that number. The next thing we do before we actually start our dose calibrator, or I should say our, our GM meter, is we want to make sure that A is the battery working. So we kick it all the way over here, and with the battery test, you see battery is okay. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to measure it with a source and see if there's a certain amount of radioactivity that it can detect, and there it's detecting the radioactivity, and that is good. So we know that we are ready to rock and roll. Um, when I approach this object, I move my source around here, my probe, and as you can hear, there is some radioactivity being given off. And let's just park this little puppy down here for a moment and take a look at this. I'm going to put it on slow-mo, so I slow down the, uh, the actual dead time, or the response time. And now we can see that it's giving off about 1.7, 1.8 times a factor of 0.1, so it's 0.17.1, 1, 
one eight. And so that's the amount of activity being given off. And then we stretch it out to three feet. And we measure that again to see what's going on there. And it's now back one. As you can hear, there's very little activity going on. Would you like that? All right. So we, we measured the source. Uh, and we'll actually show you where we log everything in. The next thing that we want to do uh, is to wipe the exterior portions of your box to make sure there's no removable contamination. These are things you always have to do whenever a radioactive source comes in. Then we can uh, put this into a test tube the te in case it is contaminated. And we walk over here and we put it into the well counter and we count to see how much activity is actually there. This is actually showing a, a curve of cesium-137 uh, which was the isotope used off of this rod, rod source, to be able to do the quality control for the equipment. So I'm going to put this back away so we can reduce our radiation exposure. And it's actually a very small amount of radioactivity. Okay, once that's counted, we, we calculate the amount of disintegrations per minute that's coming off of that uh, source, and we then come over here and we document the material that we've just arrived. We note that the package, what it contains, uh, we check the invoice to make sure that, that, that it matches uh, what we've ordered. Is there any damage? Yes or no. If there is, you've got to contact the radiation safety officers, describe the damage. You identify the amount of activity at surface at one meter. Uh, and then here's the wipe test calculation because you want to determine how much activity is actually being removed from the box. Usually there's very little to none. As long as you're below 2200 disintegrations per minute, you are good to go. That means you don't have enough removal contamination for it to be an issue. Next thing we do, we pop out our syringe, uh, which of course is this little guy right here. It's a unit dose. It's, it's labeled with the appropriate information. And uh, of course, it's lead covered. And here is the syringe that's actually in here. And again, it's labeled again one more time. So now we come over to our hood. And we can, using our distance issue, light camera action, there we go, so you can see what's going on. You then drop this into our dose calibrator for it to be read. And as you come over here, you will note that we have 364 microcarriers of activity that's actually being given off. Um, and then we are ready to remove it, uh, log that in, remove it, and... Um, Get ready to inject into a patient when the patient arrives. Yeah. So, ready? And we're all said and done. So, let's close that up. And we're ready to go. In nuclear medicine, we also, I think, as I referred to earlier, the, here is the L-block. If I need to do anything like to this dose or if I had to work with some other type of radioactive compound, I could actually work back here. This is a large L-block. Again, we have a small L-block here with a HEPA filter that sucks out the extra particles so you could actually work in this area here if you wanted to. Stop. Go. The next thing I just want to kind of point out to you is how we deal with radioactive materials, especially radioactive waste when it's already done. First of all, the most common compound that we use here in this department is Technetium 99M. And it has a six hour half-life, which means that in about 10 half-lives or 60 hours, it's completely gone. But I just can't take that dirty syringe or whatever and throw it in the trash. So we have several things. If, if things get contaminated in general, such as absorbent paper, which you see here, or my gloves, I would throw it into this canister here. It's all lead line, keep it covered, and we're ready to rock. Uh, over here, what I do is when I have a syringe that's already been done and injected to a patient, then obviously we throw it in here. Again, this is a lead container. If I open this up, there's actually nothing in here right now, but if I were to open up, here is your typical sharps box that you would have in a regular hospital department. But of course, again, we have to keep everything lead line to protect ourselves from any excessive radiation exposure. This is a cabinet that has radioactive materials in it. 
and in there we carry our, our multiple sources. The sources are to be able to calibrate or check on our equipment to make sure they pass appropriate quality control. And it's also a lead line. Um, over here, we have another type of lead cabinet type device. And this is where we keep our larger sources. And here is our large radioactive source that actually goes on to, I'll just show you briefly, the gamma camera over here so that we make sure that everything is functioning normally, correctly, etc. So there again, uh, this is a known source of activity. There are multiple devices in here called photomultiplier tubes that are going to collect that information. And essentially what we want to know is whether or not they're all working uniformly. Because uh, if they're not, if some aren't working very well, if it's too hot or too cold, then that's going to create abnormalities on a scan that's going to probably misdiagnose a patient in the long run. So let's put this back away so we don't radiate ourselves to death. And then we'll put this back, the puppy back up here. Okay, and now what we're going to do is come back over here and just to Again, a brief discussion here. You saw this earlier. This instrument here is called a GM meter or a Geiger Mueller meter. This is the probe that actually picks up the radioactivity. And it actually has a little ionization step that goes on with the, with the uh, interaction of the photons that actually come into that unit. Uh, likewise, we have another detection device. This is called a Cutie Pie. I don't know why they call it that, but it's called a Cutie Pie. Again, this, this contraption here is like this small probe here. It's not as sensitive. Matter of fact, uh, the GM meter is probably about 10 times more sensitive in picking up radiation as compared to the cutie pie. But when you look at the cutie pie very briefly, uh, you can see here that there is a digital format uh, and it's actually going through its test right now. At this point, there's 0, .0 uh, Rankin per hour that's detecting, which is a good thing. That means things are not hot or radioactive. I'll conclude by, by throwing out one other angle of all this, that, that uh, after you're all done in the hot lab with the preparation of radiopharmaceutical and the, and the QC of everything and the QC of this gamma camera, you inject the patient with the radioactive isotope, you can bring them in here and you can set the patient down on the table. You might do a whole body bone scan, which means that this table has to go all the way uh, in uh, and then com comes back out on the patient. Uh, actually gives you a whole skeletal scan by, by the process, anterior and posterior, because you have two detector heads. Um, and this also spins around in a circle, so you can get something referred to as a SPEC scan, which is single photon emission computerized tomography. And of course, if you just want to do single spot views, you could just do a single spot view either with one head or with both. So you can do an anterior and a posterior, or if you just want to do an anterior, you could just get away with that. So this is very multiversal. Uh, it's the latest and the greatest, I think, that Seaman actually puts out. Um, and this is the final component because what we actually take images of, then come over to the system over here on the acquisition station, and we do whatever kind of processing that needs to be done, which then is forwarded on to the physician for him or her to read. So thank you for spending a few moments with me. I, I hope I haven't been too confusing. And, uh, I look forward to seeing you next year, next time, next place, but preferably in the fourth dimension. Until then, take care and have a great day.